Thomas Triber. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived for Inside Boxing Weekly. So here are your hosts, Mike Goodpaster, John Einreinhofer, and Jeremiah Pricer on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. Welcome, everybody, to Inside Boxing Weekly out there about a month hiatus. Um, we are brought to you by, as always, the Retired Boxers Foundation with Jackie Richardson and Alex Ramos. Make sure you check them out on Facebook. Also by Seat Giant, which you can use the promo code TGT to get a discount on your ticket purchases. Also by BetNow.eu, where you can go to the BetNow.eu website, use the promo code TRUTH50, T-R-U-T-H, that's for anybody from Kentucky or West Virginia, 50, to get a what is that? You get like 50% on your first deposit up to $1,000. I made a joke about West Virginia with John on the show, and I lost my train of thought. So let's start off. I am Mike Goodpaster. I'd like to introduce my co-host. First up, from West Virginia, where they can't spell truth. But this man can legislate it. John Adronhofer. How you doing, John? <laughs> Good to be here, Mike. And next up, a man who lived in Kentucky, Jeremiah Pricer. That is, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm, I'm happy to be on. Always happy to be on, and I'm glad John's finally on. It's going to be a good show. Yeah, we missed John. I didn't have anybody to argue with because Jeremiah is non-confrontational, and that's no fun. Um, let's go ahead and start off. WBC middleweight champion, I guess he is. Hell, I don't know. I thought Canelo was. Jamal Charlo successfully defended his title for the first time last Saturday night. Beating Bradham, Brandon Adams, I almost said Brian Adams, it would have probably been as good a fight, by a 12-round unanimous decision. And now he's going to get a bigger matchup against Canelo Alvarez or Gennady Golovkin. That's what this guy thinks. Um, he calls him out all the time. Is Jamal Charlo ready to fight Canelo, John? Yeah, he's, he's ready to, but I don't think that the fight is going to happen anytime in the near future. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, on this level, you know, Adams came to fight. He came to survive. Uh, but, you know, we've seen a trend now where Jamal Charlo has had some trouble with guys that box. Like, uh, you know, he had trouble with Trout. He had trouble with Cora above. And then Adams, he didn't have trouble winning the fight with Adams. Adams was just kind of into to survive. But he was, you know, boxing him a bit. And, you know, Charlo's got some trouble getting his power off in those situations. So, you know, I think that's what we see. And, you know, Ken Box, you know, at, the, at this point, you would uh, you would favor uh, Canelo if a fight like that could ever even take place. I'm not sure that it can with the boxing politics. But, um, you know, Charlo's got the size. I, I, I'm not going to discount him or anything based on something like this. But, um you know, all the, all the promotional outfits and the platforms are doing it, but I think people were even misreading this WBC middleweight championship belt thing that you alluded to at the beginning, Mike. I, you know, I think PBC is just in with the WBC at this point, and, you know, Aram's in with the WBO and ESPN, and, you know, Hearn's in with the WBA. Uh, they're, they're all doing it, but I, I actually think this was more of a PBC thing where they wanted uh, – you know, Jamal Charlo to be a quote unquote full middleweight champ with an alphabet belt, which I think is a shame because I think PBC was the outfit in the platform that was initially looking to take on the alphabets for the first year or so of, of their existence. And then they decided to back off on it, which is a shame because we, we need some kind of entity to try, try to get rid of the alphabets. And this was just another example of that. It's, it's always been comical. It's just, absolutely absurdly ridiculous at this point yeah and another thing that's absurdly ridiculous is people jeremiah saying that charlo is being ducked by triple g and canelo yeah i don't i don't know man i i just it's it's all a narrative really i mean like i've mentioned before i mean it it's just funny how, you know, certain pay, people pay attention to these, you know, uh, quote unquote, uh, 
what are, what is it mandat- mandates right that are being being given out by the WBC right because what was it earlier in the year or maybe it was December of last year I, I don't really pay attention that closely but this is what they bring up they say hey the WBC said Golovkin has to fight Charlo to become the mandatory for Canelo Alvarez well <clears throat> first off. It ignores all the, they ignore all of the other mandates that were given out and almost none of which will come to fruition. Uh, what they have, they had Mikey Garcia versus, uh, um, Luke Campbell. They had, uh, they had, they had a number of other ones and I, I don't think any of them so far as I can tell are going to come to fruition unless, I mean, I suppose there's a possibility that Golovkin can get, could get the fight. But again, I, I don't know. I think it's a little bit of a stretch at this point, like John said, because of the politics. But again, A, they're ignoring all the other mandates conveniently. And the fact, B, that these mandates are often just ploys anyways. Uh, most of them don't happen. And C, it's if Golovkin and Alvarez are fighting each other and they're fighting Daniel Jacobs, you know, we're talking about a round table, the three best middleweights in the world. So, you know, it's kind of like the Sugar Ray Leonard thing when people talk about Aaron Pryor. It's like, why would these guys be afraid of Charlo when they, they've already fought better fighters? It just doesn't make any sense to me. And in fact, stylistically, I think Charlo is – a pretty close style representative of Daniel Jacobs. But to me, Daniel Jacobs is obviously more proven. And like John, it's not that I think Charlo is a bad fighter. I think he's a pretty damn good fighter. He's got good fundamentals. You know, he fights behind the jab. Uh, You know, at least he was trying for the knockout against Brandon Adams, though. I think part of that was actually his problem is that he was just kind of going the one speed there. And Adams, you know, was, was doing more to survive than anything. Plus he was, he was fighting low and, you know, he's pretty savvy in there. He's been around for a while. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things, man. It, it, it just doesn't add up. I'm not good at math. Again, I did live in Kentucky, so I'm not good at math, but it, none of it just adds up for me. And it honestly, it doesn't even, to me, wherever they're ranked, it doesn't matter because I want the best to fight the best. And Charlo is not that. I mean, he's a good fighter, but after this weekend, I wouldn't be surprised if Demetrius Andrade ranks above uh, Charlo. And so to me, Charlo is probably in line for a shot quicker than Charlo is. I mean, cause if, if Alvarez does not end up taking on Kovlev, he does not end up taking on Callum Smith or Golovkin, uh, I, I wouldn't hate an Android fight. I mean, stylistically, it's not that appealing, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to see the best of the best fight, and, and Charlo is not quite that yet. Well, and the thing that strikes me here, John, is number one, I think Charlo does not look like he has progressed, really. If you look at the Korobov fight in this one, I didn't see where he's a lot better than what he was a year or two ago. But the other thing that stands out to me about him and Android is the fact that neither one of them is really exciting to watch. Well, I think Charlo is, you know, except when he's, when he's fighting a boxer, he's had some trouble, but Andrade hasn't been. And, you know, I, I got to get back to my old original eight type thing with Andrade. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't understand all this love for Andrade and where he's being ducked and he deserves a shot. Again, people just getting clouded by these yeah. alphabet belts. Nobody's who, who ducking either one of these guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who did Andre get his alpha, alphabet belt against? Who the hell As even the remembers? Or, what, or, or, or whatever. And, and you know, here, getting back to the original eight thing is, you know, if, if there were eight or nine divisions, look at the career of Demetrius Andre. He's never beaten a top ten fighter. If there were eight or nine divisions with one champ a division, how, how, the, how the heck is he being denied a fair shot at anything? Yeah, the guy's never beaten anybody. You know, and, and we'll get to his fight with Soljeski this weekend, which was was horrible. Um, Go ahead and talk about it now because I'd better get it over as quick yeah. as possible because all it right. sucked. Yeah, if we all want to get it over with, I mean, here's a fight, and, and I think a discredit, frankly, to Adam and Soljeski. I liked Soljeski going up to this, but I don't know if it was the knockdown early or that's the way it was going to be from the beginning. But he really didn't look in to win the fight either. Uh, you know, Andre clearly. You know, you know, he won it just because he was doing a bit more. But, but he, he you know, I, I think these, you know, memes on social media and stuff, in this case with him, were accurate. You know, he was, he was jumping around ridiculously, trying to throw one shot at a time. No, no power after the, uh, 
you know, early knockdown. And, and let's face it, we can say at this point that Soljeski doesn't take a good shot. You know, he's been down against Rosado. You know, Jacobs had, Jacobs can punch, but you know, he's down against Jacobs. Now he's down, down against Andrade. And, you know, Rosado hasn't been a middleweight puncher, and, 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 you know, he was hurting him. So he doesn't take that good of a shot. He, he didn't really press to win. And, uh, you know, Andrade was just jumping around. And, and you, know, you know, something I might like to see more of that – and tend to hate when they're watching it, but in a fight like this, it would have been appropriate. You know, I, I would have just like at some point in the fight, so Jeske to just stick his hands up in the air or put his hands down or something and, and gesture to Andre, you know, let, let's fight. I mean, the guy's, the guy's jumping around and, and so, so Jeske's timidly pressing forward, but he's not doing anything. And, you know, it's allowing to Andre to do that more. And it's really not much of a fight. Um, you know, Mike, you know, Jeremiah's historian, and Mike, you'll certainly remember firsthand, um, you know, what, what happened to the days when, when referees were, were stepping in and, and telling guys, you got you got to fight or I'm going to I remember qualify. Mills Lane doing, doing that all stuff. the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's part of the, it's always been part of the rules. You don't see it anymore. And this would have been a fight, like I said, you know, if, if Solcheski would have just stood there and Andrade would have kept doing what he was doing, then, I, you know, the referee – it, it would have been one of those fights. The referee, if it wasn't already, where the referee could have stepped in and said, hey, hey, let's go, guys. You know, it's a, it's a fight here. You know, somebody's going to get disqualified if something doesn't happen. And, you know, you used to see that and guys not getting paid. You know, the boxers have it tough enough already, so I'm very sympathetic to them. I want boxers to get paid, and I want them to get paid a lot. But the fans got to get something out of this, too. If they're going to be paying customers, they're asked to being paid basically to watch it on TV now or on an app or whatever all the time. Um, and, and, you know, the, fan, the fans got to be getting something out of these fights. All right, real quick, we have a comment from the Black Disciple who says, I kind of feel bad for Jamal. Not only has Clonello ducked him time after time again, but Jamal might have to keep his options open now, whether it's against the unknown PED cheat Clonello or anyone else, Jermel might have to sell out as well. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think fighting Canelo is a sellout. I think that's what everybody and their mother is trying to do at this I'm point. I'm not really but, sure what the Black I, I mean, Disciple was trying to say there, to tell you the truth. It, yeah, I mean, here's my thing: is I, I like Jermel Charlo. I, I again, I, I've commented on the in the past. I think that you know him and his brother both are solid fundamentally. They jab well. You know they. Uh, you know, they got good double jabs in right hands. I mean, technically they're good, but uh, I just don't understand, you know, what all the fuss is about with, you know, people ducking them and all these other accusations. And I think, I think some of the hate is a bit misled. I think if anybody should get flack, I think it should be the WBC. I mean, they're the one who's essentially doing like the WBA did years ago. I mean, this is why Frezzo Kendo is still in the rankings. This is why, you know, Golovkin had to deal with Felix Sturm in a, you know, a regular situation. And I, I mean, essentially they've done the same thing here. We have a quote unquote franchise champion and now we have a, you know, a regular champion, even though they call him a full champion. I mean, it's so convoluted. It, it, you know, it really makes a sport, yeah, hard to follow sometimes. Well, the black thing. disciple, but just is because one, you... is wants to clear up what he means by sellout. If you want to hear that, okay, yeah, yeah, let's he hear says, it. Says when I say, say sellout, Jamal might have to put his foot down on how <clears throat> the way Heyman operates things. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I, mean, well, I, th I think I get. I think he. Uh, sorry, I think he, I get what I mean. See, he needs to cross political boundaries. You can go ahead, John. Yeah, no, I, I like Jeremiah. I think Jeremiah's right. And I like Jamal Charlo, too. I think for the most part, he's been exciting. Like I said, he had a little trouble with some boxers, but he's definitely at the top of the division. You know, you know, I'm not saying he's above, you know, uh, Canelo or, or Golovkin at this point. I think he is above Andrade to me. I, I don't I don't think that, I, again, this, this Andrade love, I'm not quite getting. But would he lately. beat Andrade um, with the problems he has with boxers? Uh, it'd be a tougher style matchup, but I don't think Andrade would do much against a guy as dangerous as Jamal Charlo. I mean, look at look at how little he did against the Soljeski who can't punch. Um, you know, when he's got a Jamal Charlo coming after him, it's going to be he, he, there's going to be even less output. 
Um, and I think that that's, it'd be one of those types of fights, probably. Charlo would still have the trouble with a boxer, but it'd probably be one of those things at the end of 12 rounds where you'd, you'd have people thinking Jamal Charlo won and you'd have some people thinking Andre won and, and maybe there wouldn't be all that much landed. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, you know, Al Heyman's looking at it probably in the landscape. I think he is looking at it in the landscape of current boxing that he's looking out for Jamal Charlo by getting him that WBC belt, quote unquote, full belt, which it's a, it's a joke now with, with all these titles, Pearl and franchise, but you know, that that's the problem with all the belts matters guys, in other words, and fans that evaluate everything with a belt. I think Al Heyman started PBC looking to get away from that and was kind of grind grinded down by, you know, these accusations under the Ali act and all these other things so he started playing along and thinking he's taking care of his guys like that. And, and to me, that's the problem with the fans and some of the writers. You know, if, if we just rejected all these belts, then, you know, Heyman wouldn't feel he needs to get Jamal Charlo, the quote-unquote full WBC middleweight belt to legitimize him, you know. Um, and, and this is the kind of nonsense you get. You get him fighting a Brandon Adams and then thinking they can make it quote-unquote legitimate just because they put a belt on it. But uh, the TV ratings really didn't uh, support that theory on this one. So I, I don't know. I, you, you wait for people to wise up, but, but you end up waiting forever. So we'll, we'll just have to see. All right. And I, I would say this. When we look at Canelo Alvarez, there's supposed to be a knee issue there, a left knee problem, Jeremiah. They say it's not bad enough to move him off his scheduled September 14th date. Now with... Sergey Kovalev looked like they kind of fell out of negotiations there. Says Kovalev looks to be fighting Anthony Yarde on August 24th in Russia. I think that we're going to probably see Triple G and Canelo again. Yeah, I think that was probably, uh, you know, the whole thing to begin with is that, I, I you know, I don't know if it's a PR thing where they're, you know, just trying to, play with Golovkin a little bit and, you know, get in his head. I don't know. I mean, you know, some of these writers and stuff I have questions about because you, you see this kind of like fire for and forget mentality. And a lot of, a lot of people do it, you know, where we don't like to count our losses, but I think some of these guys are doing it on purpose where, Hey, maybe they have a, uh, they have a connection at golden boy or PBC or whatever it may be. And they're, you know, somebody is intentionally, misleading them and they put it out on Twitter and then people start liking it, retweeting it, you know, it starts, uh, sat, you know, saturating the, uh, the internet and, you know, rumors start flying and people start paying attention to it. You know what I mean? It just like some of this information seems intentionally misleading and, you know, in boxing, don't believe anything until the sign, you know, the contracts are signed and sealed. Uh, but yeah, I, I have heard that Kovalev is going to be fighting Yarde. I heard it was initially an issue with, um, uh, the Russian backers, I guess they couldn't get their stuff together, but it looks as if it's going to be made. Uh, I also heard that um, uh, who was it? Uh, um, who's is who's who's the main event? Uh, Shelley, who's that? Uh, oh, uh, Kathy Duva. Uh, I, I also heard Kathy Duva say that if they were going to fight Canelo, uh, you know, the, it, there would be no catch weight involved, which I thought was interesting even if the fight doesn't get made maybe they wouldn't budge on something like that because that would make the fight less interesting um but yeah I, I, it, it does seem like Golovkin is going to be the target for September and I think DAZN wants that I mean we've talked over and over about this but you know they need these guys to justify their huge contracts and one of the ways you're going to get it is doing this uh again I don't think Demetrius Andrade has ever really been in the running for that spot uh, he's a good fighter. We all acknowledge that, but he brings little in terms of finances. In fact, though, I thought, you know, going to the Siljeki Sol fight real quick, I thought maybe he was he was trying to kind of like up his brand because he came out firing in the first round and ended up dropping him. Uh, and then, you know, he main, maintained an aggressive posture, I think, until the end of the round. And then afterwards, it was just kind of, you know, back to, uh, you know, pity pat. A boxing match but yeah i mean because of his inability to sell tickets anywhere outside of maybe rhode island that it just doesn't seem like it's a it's it's a real option so in you know i'm hearing also and i think this has been in the cards for a while too callum smith is probably going to fight billy joe saunders so i guess with uh kovalev and yard 
uh, Saunders and uh, and Smith or Smith and Saunders, I should say. Um, you know, I, I just think Golovkin makes too much sense here, and I, I'm all for it, honestly. I think after watching after watching the fights this weekend, uh, even a 37 year old Golovkin, I think, has justified a, a third fight more than than Charlo or Andre. Uh, I mean, it, to me, he just looks like he's going to push the action, and we're going to get some excitement out of that with Charlo and uh, like like you watch Charlo against Adams, for instance, and he was he was fighting small. His head movement was pretty good. It was nothing special, but you kind of you you. You put Canelo Alvarez in there, and you're thinking to yourself, like, man, Charlo would have a damn tough time with him. And then you look at Andre and how how few punches he was throwing against a guy who really wasn't that much of a threat. And again, Golovkin to me just still what you know. Even though I I favor Canelo heavily in the third fights, I still think that's a better and more fun option than any of those other guys. Yeah, because we know in the end, John, if Canelo fights Triple G, we're going to get to see a fight. You know, I, I prefer the. Three. I... Well, we lost John. And then your fourth one. You there, John? The writers. Okay. I, I, yeah. Um, I heard I, I I've prefer three, favor... but that's all I heard. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been in favor of the, uh, you know, Canelo G3. I don't understand the percentage of hardcore fans and writers that have been against it. I still don't get that reasoning because the first two fights were very good, very close. Um, they're still unfinished business there for me just because the, the fights were good and close. Uh, and we're talking about the real lineal middleweight championship on the line. Um, so I, I would prefer that. Uh, I like, though, the uh, if Canelo were to go for, for greatness with going after Kovalev at the full light heavyweight limit, a traditional division, and Kovalev being at the top of that division for a long time, uh, one of the top guys, very top guys, if not the top guy, I think that's very interesting. I think that would even indirectly put a little pressure on Golovkin to attempt to enhance his legacy. But I think an interesting report to me today that I was looking at that I think would, would be, mean a lot in this, uh, in addition to what DAZN might want or not want, is that you know Keith Eidick is, is from New Jersey. He's based in New Jersey, you know, near Kathy Duvin main events, and, and he certainly uh, – you know, known, known her for a long time in the Duvas. And, you know, he tweeted out later in the day today that, uh, you know, Kovalev, and I think it's legit, you know, Kovalev wants more money. Uh, he, and I can see where Kovalev's coming from in this market. You know, he, he's saying for a Canelo payday, you know, he, he should be getting closer to the kind of money Jacobs got. And, and they only want to offer him a couple of million dollars or something like that. So uh, I, I think that's probably legit that. You know, if if, uh, if they're not going to offer Kovalev more, he is just going to fight yard and say he'll just keep keep going in that direction. I mean, the idea for a guy like Kovalev is if I'm going to get the Canelo jackpot, you know, it's got to be a jackpot for me, not not some uh, more run of the mill payday. So you've got that side involved as well. And of course, with the September 14th date, um, you know, you would think uh, that's originally where they were going to have Canelo Triple G three. So it would seem to fit there. I don't think the Canelo knee news is anything new to me. I mean, he's already had arthroscopic knee surgery. So, uh, you know, that, that to me is something that's, that's been there, basically. So I, I, don't, I don't know where it shakes down, but it, but it does look like Kovalev feels like he, he's not being offered enough for this. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think the other thing with Kovalev is we don't know the negotiations because me and Jeremiah talked about this the other night because I would think with Kovalev, this fight's got to be at 175 to make it worth his while because I think a weight-drained 170-pound Kovalev takes away from the win for Canelo, and it really limits Kovalev's chances to win the fight. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't I – don't, I, like, I love this fight at the – Regular right, traditional 175 pound limit. Even though I also love Canelo Triple G3, it's a good enough, intriguing of a fight that I would then take that in lieu of that. But I don't want it at the catch weight. And and you know, I can see Canelo generates so much money in boxing right now. That's why, let's face it, that's why Golovkin keeps chasing. That's why the other guys are chasing him. That I could almost see Kovalev's point. 
you know, if, if he wants the assignment, if he's going to get it, he's supposed to get a jackpot. You know, he's not supposed to get like two, he's not supposed to get like two billion dollars. Yeah. That's just kind of, the way yeah, he wants to make sure it's uh, guaranteed too. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's not, he's, so, not, he's uh, not having yeah. another Andre Ward situation. No, I don't watch that. Let's face it with the zone, even with all the money that might be behind him, you know, with what they're throwing out. You know, remember in the seventies, the, the, the Harold Smith Jr. thing. When he was at the, he was yeah, at we the talked about that a few weeks ago. You remember the card he yeah. put together? And it had like what Aaron Pryor against somebody. He had what? I think Jerry Cooney, Mike. Yeah, Mustafa Muhammad Saad, Mustafa Muhammad and Saad Muhammad fighting. He had Hearns Benitez. I mean, like every big fight you could have made on one card, and he was offering all these guys huge amounts of money, and then it turned out the money wasn't there. Yeah, but all right, um, let's move to the heavyweights. Tyson Fury will be fighting next on either September 7th or 21st. Bob Arum says they want Deontay Wilder for Fury's September fight, but we also know that Bob Arum is a lying piece of shit 99.9% of his life. <laughs> so where do we think that Fury goes here? Does, does he have to fight decent competition, at least in this fight, John, or can he get away with another Tom Schwartz? Well, you know, I'm, you might, I'm not saying Aram's is probably not telling the truth, but it seemed to me that once Andy Ruiz upset Joshua, that if Wilder and Fury were not to be overly fixated on what their plans had become, they should move up their date again. Because, um, you know, I, I know Jeremiah agrees on this. The, the people that disagree with him at Transnational, I don't get where they're coming from, you know, trying to put Ruiz number one. In other words, you know, to me, it's just common sense that Fury being the last guy to win the title in the ring, Wilder, what he's already done. But that's, that's, for, that's for the way way to at that point. I mean, I, I do think there's bias there for anybody that's trying to argue that if Wilder and Fury were to fight now, that's not the one and two guys for the heavyweight championship. So, in other words, you know, what if Ortiz lands the bomb and Wilder takes them out or Fury stumbles against whoever this next opponent is? Then they blow that opportunity. So it would seem that it would make some sense to move that fight back up. I'm not saying they will, but it would make some sense. So I and, agree with you this on this, by the way, about, John. I think they should have went ahead okay. as soon as the last fight was over. But yeah. the other thing is Bob Aram says this is going to do 4 million pay-per-view buys. Once again, Bob Aram's full of shit. Well, he, admit, he even admitted he's exaggerated trying to be the wild optimist, which is kind of funny. I think a he, million he would it, still but, shock me for this fight. Yeah, I think it, uh, you look at the ratings from last weekend, you know, they were bad fights. Because you can't project pay-per-view from some of the other, like, premium cable ratings and things when you look at these for long enough. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. I mean, that, we're, we're down to where you know, things have slipped so bad even in the last couple of years that – yeah, you you got to shoot for a million. That, that's huge now. The way things are going, if they if they could get a million buys at seventy five dollars a piece, I mean that, that that's become huge now, uh, just because things have slipped so far. But you know, it's bizarre that this seems to be real news too. That apparently, you know, Fury's looking at fighting Darrell Miller, and it doesn't make sense for me for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, is Miller doesn't deserve it because you know, I, I think all three of us agree, you know, if, if you're going to have a, a positive PAD test, I mean, by any stretch of the argument, if it's, if it's a straight situation like here, there, there's no mitigating circumstances. Or anything, the guy's got to be out at least a year. Yeah, and, just like and, Canelo yeah, should have been out year. for a year, though, right? Well, Canelo's in a different situation. Though. Oh, okay. Canelo, yeah, that's you know, right. They he, made he up had... some bullshit fucking meat thing. But go ahead. No, it wasn't made up. It was based on the testing. Okay, it wasn't Nevada made up. A... John, come on. Every Mexican that's it's ever tested and... positive for PEDs has used a Mexican meat excuse. It's bullshit. Yeah, but it, it wasn't made up because it fit, it fit, it fit the testing, and it, was, and it was a strict and it's a strict liability standard in Nevada, too. Yeah, but, you know, Miller, you're supposed to be off no for a year. He... Miller tested positive for multiple substances. You know he's got to, he's got to be out out at least a year, and instead he's going to apparently going to get a big fight with Tyson Fury. It doesn't make sense for the credibility of boxing in that sense. But no matter what you think of Miller, I think it also doesn't make sense because Miller would be a dangerous opponent. I mean, why are you going to 
why are you going to throw Jarrell Miller in there who would be looking for some redemption too? Um, you know, I mean, I want to see good fights, but if this is supposed to be a keeping busy fight for Fury, you know, b- until you get wilder, I don't, I don't think business wise, Jarrell Miller would be the, the first guy you would want I, to be See, I kind of disagree because I think this, if you want this to be a million pay-per-view fight, then you need Deontay Wilder to take off Luis's Ortiz's head, and then you need Tyson Fury to beat a Dillian White or a Jarrell Miller. And Jarrell Miller has never proven that he would be a problem for anybody. He's just a fat dude that had to use steroids. I mean, he's not really beaten anybody that really stands out to me that I remember. I mean, I don't think that, other than the fact that they're heavyweights and anything can happen when you're that big and you get hit, there's nothing there that makes me think that Tyson Fury would have trouble with Jarrell Miller. And then he throws a lot of throwing a lot of punches. Now, if the PEDs enhanced it, you know, we have to see what he does without PEDs. But well, I would think the PEDs would enhance improves, his endurance from what he was doing. I think they would, but 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 you know, we have seen strange things in the past, and when guys are being tested and they still fight pretty good. You know, in other words, that, that, that becomes then to me like an X factor. You know, we don't know if Jarrell Miller is going to be able to bring that without PEDs. But let's just say for the sake of argument that he does, that to me is going to be a problem for Tyson Fury then because Tyson Fury doesn't really pop hard enough to hold you off. Oh, yes, he does. Put a lot of pressure. I mean, come on. Luis no, Ortiz couldn't knock out Chris Ter, what, what the hell's his name, the hammer dude. But I – I watched Tyson Fury take him out a few years ago when the kid was in his prime. I, I think that's I, – I just don't agree with that. I think Tyson Fury can pop when he plants his feet and he wants to pop, Jeremiah. Yeah, I think he can punch. I mean, I, I'm not saying he's a big puncher, but, I mean, I, I think the the line of reasoning here, though, is that, you know, if, if Miller can still maintain a good work rate – and being as big as he is, he's going to make Tyson Fury work uh, maybe a bit harder than he needs to. And again, you, you never know with, with the heavyweights. But, I mean, I, I don't want to see Jarrell Miller get the shot at all. I really don't. But the heavyweight landscape is – there's just not a whole lot there if you're looking at, you, you know, like potential opponents for Fury. Because when when you look at the top ten, I mean, it's like uh, – shit. You know, I mean, Ruiz and Joshua, they got the rematch. Povetkin, he's kind of out of the running because of the recent loss. Dillian White, I'm not even sure Dillian White gets past uh, Oscar Rivas, to be hey, honest. But quick, his schedule's taken Joe up. What about Joyce if he beats Bryant Jennings? Yeah, I suppose that's a possibility. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know what Joe Joyce's feelings are on the, on the matter, you know, because he doesn't have a physical title. You know, well, Fury doesn't have a physical title. Uh, but I also think that uh, Kubrat Pulev could be an option as well. You know, granted, the money is uh, tight. Though, of course, I, I don't know. Pulev, I, I, Pulev, to me, strikes me as one of those guys who's willing to wait his turn if he gets a shot at an alphabet belt. And I know he's been... Uh, The IBF's mandatory for like 26 years now. I think, you know, uh, just a few years behind Fresno Kendo. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really when you look at the landscape, you know, Miller, Pulev, uh, you know, Ortiz is obviously taken up. Parker, Parker just won. Parker is partially promoted by top rank. So I suppose that's a possibility as well. Uh, You know, Konaki not really dangerous than Jarrell Miller. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I I don't think I, 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 think I don't it's think an easier Parker style hit. matchup for Fury. Yeah, I think that's an easier style matchup. For yeah, Fury. but the thing is, this yeah. he can go twelve rounds. I don't think Jarrell Miller can because everybody talks about Jarrell Miller's stamina, but he's never really fought anybody that could fight him back, has he? So I mean, mm-hmm. your stamina is a lot a lot better when you're not really facing in much resistance. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's true. I mean, Parker is more proven. I just think stylistically, if he chooses to box, you know, to me, Miller is more of a fighter. Parker is more of a a boxer. And anybody who chooses to box against Fury, I I think, loses. But, I mean, regardless, I mean, we're we're very limited in our options here. I mean, I think the the names we're really just looking at here, if he actually takes somebody close to top 10, because when you look at 10 through 20, there's, there's, I mean, really, there, there's just not many options at all, regardless of how you cut the pie. I mean, it looks like it's Pulev, looks like it could be Parker, 
Looks like it could be Miller. I mean, those are really the only three options that I see in the top t- top 20. But then again, I could be wrong. It could just be another Tom Schwartz guy or somebody just slightly rated ahead of him. It could be, uh, again, if they don't want to risk a Deontay Wilder fight, which I really wouldn't blame them for doing so. Uh, I mean, it could be somebody like Otto Wallen, the Swedish prospect. Yeah, He's got to be B.J. Like Flores first. Don't disrespect B.J. Flores. <laughs> okay, I, I'm sorry. I mean, but th- that's my thing is it, it, it could be somebody like Tom Schwartz just slightly better. I mean, it's just kind of hard to speculate. But if they're throwing the name Miller around, they might be shooting for somebody just a little bit better. Yeah. I, know, I was thinking when, yeah, when, when Wallace was coming back that show, showtime, we might not have seen the last of him after he gets by B.J. Flores. If he gets by B.J. Flores. <laughs> Don't underestimate no, B.J. Flores. No guarantee there. There's no guarantee. Um, what about Tony Bellew? <laughs> we can get Tony Bellew back. I would really like to see Fury fight Dillian White. Because yeah, I, I think I really think Fury kicking Dillian White's ass and Luis Ortiz getting his ass kicked by Deontay Wilder would be the best thing that could happen if you wanted to build a big fight. If you don't want to build a big fight, then you have him fight Tom Schwartz in a rematch or Sefer Seferi or whatever. I don't think I don't. I'm not sure White's getting by Rivas. Um, I'm, I'm I'm looking for that. But, but, but if he, I've never if seen he does. anything from Rivas that would make me say that he's beaten anybody because the only thing he did was he got the one shot against Brian Jennings in the twelfth round. Yeah, well, he, it's not like he was dominated that fight. I mean, no, it was but a close he wasn't affair. Winning that fight and Brian Jennings, his greatest claim to fame is he went twelve rounds with Vladimir Klitschko and won two or three rounds. Yeah, he's but he's a good boxer. I mean, that, that's my point stylistically. Is yeah. Will I, I, White has a good left hook, and I mean, I appreciate the White the the work White has done. I mean, White has shown a penchant to fight just about anybody, and I think you know he deserves respect because of that. I, it's just when I look at the fight stylistically, Jennings has real long arms. He's got like an 84-inch reach. He's kind of got that Philly craftiness that you see from a lot of guys who come out of that part of the country. I mean, he's a good boxer. To me, White is is more of a fighter. He's going to be aggressive. And then you evaluate Rebus. Yeah, Rebus is, I think, smaller than White. He doesn't have as much experience. But in terms of punching technique, I think Rebus is the sharper hitter white may have one, one you know he might have one more one punch knockout power but i think rebus is tighter technically uh i think white's a bit harder worker uh you know i haven't seen rebus in a tough fight so again to me this is a toss-up fight but i'm certainly not convinced that white is going to come through with this i i actually think they probably should should have you know stuck with somebody a bit easier uh you know because i know he's been waiting for his shot for a while too but I don't know. I just think that's a tough styles fight. And if White gets by it, I would love to see Tyson Fury take that fight. I think he could beat White. Uh, I think that would be a, a, a damn good place to go. Either that or Jennings, I think, are just fine. But, you know, we just got to wait it out and see. Yeah. What about Freza Kendo, John? We can't forget Freza Kendo. Yeah, Freza's still around. I, you know, I and agree. Manuel I, I Char. Could, could handle White. But, uh, yeah, these alphabet guys, I mean, we got, you know, that they're, once they're putting together what Trevor Bryan and Manuel Manuel Char for the WBA regular title, and they've talked about Fury for that too. That's right, we forgot about that. But they've talked about Fury with Trevor Bryan, you know, getting him an alphabet trinket. Um, not that anybody, need, I, I don't see why anybody should need it, but you know, you know, he's also he's also been discussed at times, um, but. You know, these are, you know, these these don't seem to be fights we need to see. I mean, like you said, Mike. In theory, you know, if 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 other and Fury knockout guys that are good fighters, I mean, it, it does make it bigger. You've got some risk there, but you know, I, I think they they should maybe just get to it now and and, and readjust. But I agree uh, too. I, I doubt we'll do that. It's, but it's it's not going to happen yet. They're going to try to build it up bigger the way Wilder and Joshua <laughs> did, and somebody's getting knocked out, and then it goes all the way again. Yeah, it's possible. Well, that's how it usually happens when you wait in boxing, especially with heavyweights. Um, Jeremiah, anything else you want to discuss? Anything else I would like to discuss? I mean, hell, what, what, have, what have I seen this that's been much. going on lately? I don't know. 
No, it's it sucks, man. It, it's because it's like you know in the spring and fall slash winters when you start you, you know you get the big fights. So now it seems like we're sitting on our hands waiting for things to materialize. You know, I saw Carl Frampton talking about opponents and all these, and I do think we're going to have some good fights. Oh, but I did hear uh, I. Th- I think one of you mentioned it. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I also heard, and I, I think it's bull crap, but uh, I heard they, they also tossed around the idea of Golovkin getting Mungia yeah, in the I fall. Yeah. yeah, I, I heard that, that too. Actually, Oscar I, I thought it, shit. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, you know, it's, we know that they're trying to cash Mungia out because he just doesn't look like a, you know, a world beater at this point. I mean, when you're struggling with Dennis Hogan, yeah, you know, I, I think the writing is on the wall. Well, and when you're struggling a little bit with Liam Smith, too. Uh, well, actually, if, De- you know, Dennis Hogan is doing better than Liam Smith, yeah, you, you've got some serious issues there. But, yeah, I mean, it seems like Munguia, we've talked about this, you know, all of us time and time again. It's, Munguia is one of those guys that I think they're looking to cash out, but I don't think Golovkin is that guy. I think they make too much money with an Alvarez fight. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that's what they're going to be waiting for. I mean, in, I don't know. I just, it just doesn't, I think it's like you said, I think they're just kind of playing around and, you know, and that, that was actually sort of my point about, you know, some of these writers like Mike Coppinger, you know, I don't really have an issue with him. I know so, a lot of people don't like him and, you know, he, I mean, he just kind of is what he is. He used to write for the ring and I was writing for the athletic and, you know, he just, he really just, has sources and puts news out there and that's all good and well, you know, there, there's a place for, for guys like that in the game. But, you know, to me, it just seems like that's one of those ploys where, you know, they're like dangling a fake fish in front of Golovkin and they're like, Hey, you want this? And really it just seems like it makes sense to you know, put Mungi against Canelo Alvarez, whenever the hell that would be though. Cause it doesn't even seem, you know, from all the rumors I've heard, it doesn't even seem like Mungi is on Canelo's radar. So I don't know if there's an actual plan for that or what, but uh, everybody's chomping at the bit to get him anyways. But yeah, I think, I think Golovkin beats Mungi and it's, Funny because they remember they they tossed around Munguia as uh, as an opponent, you know, in place of Marta Rosie, and he probably he might have been a better opponent than Marta Rosie in anyways. But yeah, it's funny we almost got that fight a few years back. But yeah, I just think that's uh, one of those fish. I, th- I think Golovkin smashes Munguia. Yeah, I think anybody that's really good smashes Munguia. Um, John, anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I think uh, just on that point before I mention my final thoughts, I, I, I still wouldn't discount Munguia because of his age, you know, because of his size and his age, uh, but his youth. But uh, I, I, what I got a problem with is you look at the TV ratings from this weekend, very low on Showtime, uh, very low for the top-ranked card on Friday night with Beltron and Coma on ESPN. And, and let's not let Daz the zone off the hook just because they don't release their numbers. You know that their numbers were much lower than you know top ranks on ESPN and Showtime because of the platform and the, the so, so many fewer subscribers compared to. I'll give you this much though: the one entities. that I watched was the zone. Right, but but you but but you know you're a hardcore follower of sport. You know, you, there's nobody else. There's nobody else viewing that. I mean, it, it's just so low. So, you know, it, it would be much lower than the Showtime number. So my, my point is what we've lost in boxing really over the years is, and this is something in other areas of boxing you didn't have at all, and, and I'm, I'm looking, and I'm going to uh, compliment one card coming up, which is the only card I really see it, is we've lost the point where, where fights are being made just because they're good fights. In other words, you're, you're not putting a fight together just because you want one particular guy to win. You're just taking two good fighters saying this would be a good fight and putting it together and then just seeing who comes out on top. I mean, that, that's, that's the way fights that are going to be broadcasted should be. That's the way most of them should be. And then you have a, a few exceptions here and there, but, but none of them are being made that way. They're just all being made as showcases for some certain fighter they're, they're not meant to really be competitive. And, you know, what, what can you expect from even the hardcore fans? I mean, I mean, they're, they're not being given any compelling reason to tune in and take time out of your weekend. All these fights are on the weekend. None of them are during the weekend anymore. And, you know, so, so people are asking to take, take time out of their weekend and not being offered anything. 
and what I was going to compliment it to surprise to me, but but the Warren card coming up with Dubois and Gorman yeah. and Jennings and Joyce, that's basically a throwback where you're, you're putting these guys together where it's going to be good fights. And, you know, maybe he thinks you might know who's going to win, but it's not a certainty, and the odds show that. I mean, Dubois and Gorman fight is close to even money. Dubois is a slight favorite. Joyce is a favorite over Jennings, but he's not a big favorite. And Joyce has not looked good in his last two fights. So, you know, he, he's in a risk situation there. So, I mean, and that's on the same card in their heavyweights, which I do prefer for heavyweight fights if I'm going to get good fights because, you know, they've got the power and, and people can get knocked out. And, you know, that's, that's pro boxing to me. So, um, you know, that card, Warren's doing what we need. I'll, I'll, I'll give him props there. Uh, I think the Pacquiao-Thurman card's not that bad. Pacquiao-Thurman card is good. The problem is it's pay-per-view. But, but yeah. the Pacquiao, what we can say for the Pacquiao-Thurman card, and you know, I think everybody would have to agree, I mean, and we're not getting that usually either, that's a good night of boxing. I mean, the Pacquiao-Thurman card with all those fights lined up, I mean, you know, they've even got a jog bomb there now fighting an undefeated, uh, I think it's a Turkish guy. You know, I, I'm not sure how good he is, but, you know, I think he's got some amateur pedigree. You know, plants on there. there that, that's in the non-pay-per-view part, those fights. But then you got, a, a, you know, a lot of interesting fights on the pay-per-view portion and the main events almost even money. That's a good night of boxing. The Warren card's good. Um, you have to look forward to those two because they're – we just haven't been offered up competitive cards. We've been offered these. We keep getting offered these <clears throat> showcase events, and they're just a lot of them are just garbage. Yeah. And I hey, think and, and speaking of that, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of that, I, I was going to ask, and I, I don't know how many videos you watch, but uh, did you happen to catch Montero's breakdown of the, uh, you know, the big entities and what value they brought you? On that, I thought it was interesting, but I didn't get a chance to uh, watch that. You you should it, it it puts things into perspective like you know he Montero does a good job of you know evaluating uh, the whole year at least what we know of it you know in terms of what uh, Fox has given us what DAZN has given us and you know, just what ESPN has given us and, and it's it's pretty interesting of course uh, you, you know everything is not settled uh you know so we don't know exactly how everything's going to play out here you know there's still a lot of fights to be made but yeah he was talking about uh i mean essentially zone is the winner okay but uh you, you look at pbc and uh, you know we we were talking about how they tried to ignore the alphabet soup titles and initially it seemed like they were trying to run on uh, you know like a free uh, a free TV platform as well. You know, they had some damn good fights there. You know, uh, Keith Thurman against Porter and, and Danny Garcia, and that was excellent. But, you know, they've got like five, six pay-per-views lined up for the year. And the total for all of these is going to be like, what, $500 uh, plus dollars or something. Uh, so it, to me, that's just awfully disappointing. I mean, it, it just seems like they've they've done a, a complete 180 in terms of, you know, where they were when they first started because, I, I remember the Broner fight. I, who was it? I don't know if he fought. What, who was it? Ashley Theophane, or I can't even remember right now. Yeah. But they didn't like they had those big entrances, and I don't even know if they were letting them pick their own entrance music, you know. But they were ignoring the Alphabet Soup titles, and and now we're getting, you know, a bunch of titles. We're getting a bunch of pay per views, and it, it's just a bad look. I, and part of the speculation is that they're shopping a PBC around to a potential buyer. And I guess, uh, you know, the, the UFC guys or what is, what is it called? Zufa boxing. I, I guess the guy who owns UFC or whatever is in the running for that. In so de- endeavor, uh, yeah. yeah, that that's yeah, part of the speculation endeavor. is that, you know, they're, they're actually shopping around. So they're trying to get their, their, you know, their money in before that, you know, the deal gets finalized. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think for me, I, I still don't think there's a winner, but it became more of a wash. I think just like you described, Jeremy, Jeremiah, I thought that, you know, PBC was way ahead because of what they were trying to do. And then because of some of the disappointing things that they added, it got to be more of a wash. Because, yes, they're running all those pay-per-views, but you don't have to subscribe. So, you know, you've still got free stuff out there. You can pick and choose. But, no, they lost their – but they – now you're looking at it and you're like, yeah. Yeah, PBC pay per view here and there. Way and ahead of PBC. And... 
I, th I think for the year, DAZN's number one. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, you know, they've really given you, you know, they've given you one fight you would have bought on pay per view, uh, which is you know Canelo and which uh, is one more than uh, what PBC has given me. Uh, yeah, right now, but they they previously gave gave you you know Thurman and uh, Porter and and Thurman and Garcia. Yeah, you know, but all CBS. they've given us is pretty much pay-per-view fights. I mean, they've given us pay-per-view garbage, too. With the zone, I pay nine ninety nine a month, and I get fights that I want to see more often than not. I mean, I wanted to see Anderson Error. I wanted to see Andrade and Selecki. I wanted to see Joseph Parker. I wanted to see those fights. I didn't want to see anything else that was on this weekend. Well, you know, you got like, you know, I mean, that, those fights are like on a level like Comey and Beltran and what you got on ESPN, yeah. you know, for, for your regular ESPN subscription. So, you know, I mean, it's it, they're, it, it's like, it's it's just almost like Charlo Adams, like you got on Showtime, you know, which is, you know, you pay for Showtime, but you get a bunch of other stuff. I, I think to, to me now, I don't like all the, pay, the pay-per-views PBC's running, but, you know, they've, lost, they, they've done too much of it where they've lost their edge and, and, you know, and that's why you, you've heard me talk differently in the last couple of months because now it's become more of a wash um, where I thought PBC was doing something better for the sport. And, uh, you know, for some of the reasons like Jeremiah described, I really liked some of that stuff early on, what they were trying to do, get rid of the alphabets, you know, the, the stuff on CBS, the Thurman fights. Um, but now it's, now to me it's just like a wash. And I don't mean it's a wash like if you bought every paper – PBC pay per view, but it's not a subscription. You can pick and choose them, but you know nobody's no, nobody to me right now has got an edge. It's just it's just now slipped to where it's it's just all of them are just kind of milking the hardcore fan for all they can, and and uh, that's all. It's not about expanding. You know, no, nobody's really trying to expand or anything at this point. I don't think they're trying to milk the hardcore fan for all they could because I think if that was true, DAZN would have had Canelo against Jacobs on pay per view, and they didn't. So you're still, it's $10 a month. I mean, ESPN well, Plus is $5 they, they, a month. Yeah, we have a mic. You got to subscribe. You got to The zone doesn't give you any movies or anything like that. You got to subscribe for the whole year. Well, they, give you, they give you Major they League up. Baseball. They give you UFC. Shit. They, they, give you, they give you a Major League Baseball. They give you a Major League Baseball wraparound show that looks like it's in somebody's basement. You know. Uh, you know, giving little highlights of Well, I hate to tell games, you this, you know? though, John. When I buy something for boxing, I don't really care what else they give me. I, I can tell you this. Showtime, I've had Showtime for years. There's been very few times I've ever watched anything on Showtime because if it's a movie I really wanted to see, I already paid the four ninety nine when it came out on the pay-per-view on the movie thing. I mean, HBO was probably the closest thing because they got real sports. They got some really good documentaries. Showtime's documentaries usually suck. But HBO, I could see that argument. With Showtime, I don't find myself watching Showtime at all unless there's boxing on. And there's no boxing on Showtime right now. Yeah, and that's, no, I'm, that's I'm, my... I'm, I'm, no, I'm more like that, too. I'm more like yeah, that's that my lens. Just that, yeah. It's just that uh, the zone. It's just that the zone up their monthly price. You know, if you want to do the one month alone, you got to pay the twenty. And then, you know, I, I mean, for guys like us, at the, at this present moment, you know, do I like the zone hundred dollars for the year thing? Yeah, I, I basically like it at the present moment. You know, I, I don't know if it'll stay. I like John, I would like to bring but, up if you would have listened to me, it would just be nine dollars a month for another year for you. Well, that, that's true. I'm, I'm what I've got now. I, well, I had to get it for the year, but I guess I'm at eight through thirty-three a month for the yeah, year. So I'm still right. good till next yeah, May or year. June, I think. So at nine bucks a month. So that's why I think it's good. When it goes to twenty, maybe I'll reconsider it. But <laughs> yeah, I'm we'll a see. boxing yeah. fan, and the thing is this: if they're giving me three or four, two or three cards a year, that would normally cost me eighty bucks, and I only got to pay twenty dollars a month. I mean, let's face it, over the last five or six weeks on the zone, you saw Ruiz and Joshua, you know, you go back before that, you had the Canelo fight. So right there, to me, I've already you got You also have the WBSS. 
Yeah, you get yeah, the, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Regis Pro Grace is going to fight what Josh Taylor here pretty soon. You get Dordicos against Breedis. I mean, come on, the zone kicks we'll, the shit out of all those yeah. guys. Well, and, and we'll probably get Canelo Golovkin three. I mean, uh, t- here's my thing is and Joshua uh, against you know Ruiz again too. That's yeah, all well, so, be so here's this year. Yeah, well, here's my thing too is. I, I don't know. So how, do, how does ESPN Plus work? Do you have to have ESPN as well? ESPN doesn't. No. Or can you I'll just have, have? Yeah, you can just have ESPN. You can just Plus. have Plus. Yeah. Just yeah. Okay. Plus. Okay. So so here's the thing: is is that five dollars a month for uh, you know twelve months? It's like uh, sixty bucks or whatever. Um, you know, and then you have what the eighty dollar pay per view with uh, Khan and uh, or Crawford and Khan, right? So it's at a hundred and forty about. And so DAZN is what one twenty or uh, what? What what is DAZN? Um, yeah, for twenty. How, how much is it a year? One hundred and twenty. For the year, you can get it for a hundred. Yeah. So a hundred so for the year, for and then years. ESPN. Okay, so ESPN has, uh, you know, if you pay for the full year and then you pay for the 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 Crawford Com pay per view, that's one forty. Uh, and then you look at PBC, which is supposed to have, and, and I'm just putting it in the context of this year, because it just seems like the years fluctuate anyways. Cause I remember there was, you know, times when HBO really seemed like they were number one and then Showtime surpassed them. And now it seems like Showtime's just getting the crap fights that, uh, they don't want to put on PBC on Fox. And so, you know, there's a lot of fluctuation there, but in terms of the year, uh, I mean, when you evaluate to, what to zone has given us, Again, for a hundred and dollars compared to again, if if you paid for the uh, the Crawford and Con, that's that's a hundred and forty if you add in your subscription, because uh, I don't think anybody pays for standard definition anyways. Uh, Actually, PB- I would like to say this: when it comes to pay per view and the difference is sixty nine to seventy nine, I get standard definition. Oh, the, well, there you go. Oh, I mean, then we we, we found him. We, we 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 found the guy. My eyesight yeah, we found is that not guy, good yeah. enough <laughs> to tell the difference between standard and high definition, anyways. Unless I sit there with my reading glasses we on. We found the guy. And then my kids will be posting yeah. pictures of me on Facebook and Instagram to show everybody how old their dad is. <laughs> You're squinting it. Well, you don't have high definition eyes, so I guess that makes sense. But I mean, if you just look at the year, do you see what PBC is trying to do? I mean, even if, even if. Only, they only end up having three pay-per-view cards. I mean, you're paying way more uh, for PBC and Showtime than you are paying for uh, DAZN and, 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 frankly, ESPN. So, to me, DAZN seems to be the front runner so far. But I, I'm not putting my eggs in any of these guys' baskets. I mean, you know, we've got to get good, consistent fights regularly. And, you know, the politics kills the shit anyway. So, it's, you know, it's, it's tough to get on board with any of them. But if the zone does give one more pay per fight that would have been pay per view for the year, they're going to pretty much lock in their argument at least for the 2019. So, and that may happen in September. That's what I'm hoping for. That's yeah, it's pretty much whatever the Canelo fight is. All right. Next up, we right. have a question from Hamed from Cardiff, Wales. With so many pay per views in the UK now and PBC fights going on pay per view in America also, what does that say about the markets? Is pay per view never going away? Well, that's what I was saying that for my friends in the UK a couple of years back, I said, don't let that pay-per-view monster out of the cage. You'll, you'll never put it back in. Yeah, but and at least theirs are all like 20 bucks a pop. pop. So at least they're not going right. to be like 80 dollars. 20 bucks. Yeah, but there's like 36 of them. I know. <laughs> and they, and they got to watch them. And they got to watch some of them at like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That's what Hamed <laughs> told us when he was on the show about a week ago. You know, I mean, come on. I think Fury yeah. and Schwartz was even on pay-per-view over there, wasn't it? Yeah, it yeah. was, and it was like four in the morning. Yeah, but I, I think here's the here, here's the problem. Let, let me, but that, that does kind of dovetail into an argument that I think a lot of people don't see that it's appropriate in answering that question is when when I start, you know, the, you know, there's even some writers that'll say like when, when let's say I'm talking about TV ratings, like well why why you know, you know who cares? All us hardcore fans just watch the sport. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. Just just enjoy what you're watching. Well, the problem is the, the more the fan base shrinks, more the hardcore fans are going to be asked to pay. And that's what you're getting in the U.K. right now. So, you know, we've already had that in the U.S. Now you're getting more in the U.K. And you ultimately get that everywhere. In other words, the more the fan base shrinks, the less people that want to watch it, you know, for, for the promoter. And that's where... 
Well, that's why whenever there's some platform that's offered that you got to pay, and we get, keep getting more of that, and frankly, yeah, PBC, PBC doing it with more $75 pay-per-views, it, it, it's, a, it's a very bad thing because it's putting it all on the back of the hardcore fans. So uh, to me, that's only an indication that the fan base is shrinking and they're trying to squeeze more and more out of the hardcore fan base, which is getting smaller and smaller. All right, guys, we got anything else? Is that a no? I, I guess it is. I haven't, I haven't seen anything, honestly. I mean, you know, I searched the news. Up. I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess what – I mean, we can – no, I didn't see anything. I, I didn't see much. I actually just skimmed I, – yeah, I skimmed through the news just to see what there was, and I, I didn't really see anything. So I don't really have anything to to add. All right. For a weekly show next week, John, which day do you want to shoot for Probably, probably Sunday night. Even though we, uh, I guess we're, we're not going to be really we'll getting many fights this weekend. About. That's right. Yeah, we'll have to make something. Yeah, we'll, we're doing it tomorrow night. Boxing, John, something will happen. <laughs> yeah, John Responte. We'll see if it's the NFL, a Kansas City Chief would get arrested. We could talk about that, but it's not. Um, maybe Adrian Broner will do something stupid. Uh, well, there's no maybe about that, but maybe we'll find out. About like it fight Lee it. Selby. That's stupid. <laughs> yeah, he's fighting Lee Selby. So. Well, hell, you know what? With the <laughs> amount of punches Adrian Brunner fire throws, maybe at least Selby could pull the upset. God, I hope so. But, all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. We'll be back tomorrow night inside Boxing Daily at 11 o'clock Eastern with our special guest, John Responti, to talk a little boxing movies. Not just Rocky this time, but maybe some of our favorites, some of the worst movies we hate. Me and John will fight about Raging Bull. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for now, though. Make sure you check out all the shows on the Grueling True Sports Network. Make sure you go to the Retired Boxers Foundation on Facebook with Jackie Richardson and Alex Ramos. Make sure you check them out. They're one of our sponsors. Also, Seat Giant, where you get a pro, where you get a discount of 5% by using the promo code TGT. And, of course, BetNow.eu, where you can get a 50% cash back bonus on your first deposit of $1,000. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. You can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Xeno Live Radio, YouTube, and 200 other places. So, basically, anywhere you find podcasts, you'll find the grueling truth. So, for John Einreinhofer, Jeremiah Pricer, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.